Glukov, Leute, welcome back to another episode of History of Schalke. We've already done the origins, the 1920s through 1930s, and the 1930s through 1940s. On this episode, we're going to get to the 1940s through 1950, to 1950, I should say, the World War II years. Uh, yeah, we've got a lot of catch up on, so let's get into it. So, looking back into the last episode, uh, you know, from last episode to this episode, those 20 years, really, from 1933 to 1944, that's 11 years, the club won the Westphalia Championship 11 times in a row, sometimes so superior that the gap to the runners-up was more than 10 points. I mean, every time the qualification for the final round of the German championship happened, Schalke were in those finals. Now, during the 40s, I, I did mention this goes up to 1944. So during the 40s, the championships that Schalke won were 1940, 1942, and 1944. Now, obviously, what majorly impacted this decade, for not just Schalke, but for the world, really, uh, was the huge, huge impact of World War II. Uh, and Schalke were no exception to this one. Looking back at the past decade in the 30s, uh, it certainly was the glorious time for Schalke, where Schalke won um, a majority of its championships in, in Germany. Uh, but World War II, unfortunately, would be the turning point for Schalke and their titles. And not to mention a couple players that they lost during this time, the Ala Urban and Bernard Fula, who were drafted into the Wehrmacht. And they both fell at the front uh, during the war. So two key players for Schalke, gone. Uh, and this majorly impacted him. Obviously, no, not playing games for for a couple of, for a couple of years uh, impacted no no championships. But also the fact that you know losing a couple of the key players, and then really kind of single a kind of downward turn for Shaka, uh, weren't able to live up to what happened in the 30s. So actually, it wasn't it wasn't until October 21st, 1944, that Shaka actually played their last competitive game. This was against Alemannia Gelsenkirchen. Then on November 6th, an Allied bombing attack destroyed the office of the Schalke Macht, and Glukov Arena was also unplayable. So the games were going to have to stop no matter what. Yes, the war was going on, but then when, you're, when your stadium gets destroyed, you can't really play any games, can you? So it wasn't until July 22nd, 1945, that Schalke actually played their first football game after the war. Uh, and this was against a city selection from Vaughn. Uh, no more so-called potato games followed in which, the you know, uh, the miners they would bring back food with him after as a bonus after their games difficult times after the war and so you know using potato as a, as bonuses uh, as opposed to getting wages obviously food was a big uh, concern back then and trying to feed your family so that's that's the way the coal miners were able to bring back potatoes with with the, to their families in March 1946 uh, the ball finally gets rolled on the newly founded Landesliga Westfalen uh, but the most important task of that year is for Schalke to repair the the damage Glukov Arena obviously which was damaged in, in November 1944 during the war and it wasn't until July 7th that they were actually played their first game uh it's actually the first game the second half of the season at the new at the Glukov Arena after it was repaired when Schalke played Westfalia Hern in front of a home crowd for the first time and won five nothing uh the fans were just so uh so happy to see Schalke back that I mean tears of happiness were in their eyes after the game uh it was really a beautiful sight for Schalke to work together as a community to build this arena and then to, to open the new stadium with a 5 nothing victory over uh, Westfalia and Hearn. But as, as nice as that victory was, 5 nothing in your, in your home opener in the new stadium, this was pretty much the end of Schalke supremacy in the Ruhr area, unfortunately. And, and you know, a, a new leader will be, will be announced in the coming season. So on, on May 18, 1947, uh, Schalke was supposed to be the favorite in the finals of the Westfalia Championship. But against all odds, uh, the new champions of Westphalia would be the, and I hate to say it, Borussia Dortmund. Yes, Borussia Dortmund, our rural rivals, beat us in the finals in 1947. And it really kind of turned things in, 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 in the rural valley around, uh, where once we were the dominant figure, rarely losing uh, in the rural valley, especially as Borussia Dortmund. Things kind of took a flip on the other side uh, after that game. So after that defeat, Schalke starts in the newly founded Oberliga West. Uh, and at the end of the second season, Schalke is actually threatened with relegation uh, for the first time. Didn't help that one of the best players, Otto Tobilski, uh, broke his leg at the end of the first half of the season. Uh, and it pretty much ended his career. Um, and it seemed like it was going to be a terrible, terrible omen for Schalke when that happened. Uh, your star player breaks his leg. Not a good sign whatsoever. And things were very bad for Schalke. And really the only reason they were not relegated that season 
is because there was an increase from 13 clubs to 16 clubs and victories in the last two games in a relegation playoffs uh, in 1949 it helped them escape relegation that year. Uh, and the good news, you know, for, for Schalke during this time, with obviously the, their, their main star player had a broken leg, uh, someone had to step up, and it was Walter Zwickhoffler and, and Hermann Eppenhoff. Uh, they came back from, from captivity during the war, and they were able to help Schalke stay up in those crucial games. And yeah, really, if it wasn't for those two games that they won, they would have been relegated that year. But it did not happen that year, and for, for fortunately for them. Now, the following seasons, they did get a little bit better, but the dominance of Schalke in football west in, in the Ruhr Valley was certainly over. Um, and that pretty much encapsulated the, the 40s. The 40s started out with a bang in terms of championships, three championships in the first four years of the 40s. World War II hit, and that kind of really was a turning point for Schalke, you know, in summation of all this. Um, and then eventually, once things started you know, getting back to action, once Glukov Arena was rebuilt, Dortmund came calling and they beat us in the final and it kind of like signaled the end. Uh, it seemed seemingly seemingly the end of, of a long time supremacy in in uh, in Ruhr Valley and in in the, and in the German in the German Championship as well. But um, as we get into the fifties, some things some things started to change around. And we'll and we'll get to those. So hopefully you enjoy the nineteen forties nineteen fifties. Long time coming, no doubt about it. Uh, if if you found this information helpful or you enjoyed this content, please give it a like. Uh, we very much appreciate it. If you haven't done so yet, check out the first three series or first three episodes in the series. Um, look at the origins, 1920s to 30s, and then the 30s through 40s. Uh, so definitely give those a check out as well. And then we'll continue on in this series with the 50 through 60s coming up soon. So thank you again for uh, joining us with the content. And uh, we'll catch you soon, either on the podcast or on the watch alongs. Glue Galf. Glue Galf.